welcome to today's video. We're going to be taking a look at this, which I have literally found on my floor. Um, I knew it was there, obviously, but it's been there for some time. And it is a Hitachi VT M640E. Apparently it has four heads. It's a very slimline little VCR, actually. Um, all of the timer controls, etc., are... Actually, on the remote, if I had the remote, um, but all of the main deck controls are here. The screen does actually come off like so, but um, that can easily be rectified with a small amount of glue. Um, also, there are no screws in it, so I'm not exactly sure what has gone on inside of here. There's also no plug, so if we look at the flex, it looks like somebody's literally just cut this off, so we'll need to rectify that shortly. What I'm going to do first is there are two screws literally holding it in. Those screws are no longer there, so you know what? Let's get the lid off and have a look inside and see if it's been pillaged for parts. So we've got the cover off. It all looks like it's uh, still there, to be honest with you. Power supply is still there. Um, I'm not sure, I haven't actually taken the... Uh, the bottom off of it so I can't tell if that if anything has changed under there but it does seem to be sort of very reminiscent of a deck of this sort of era this is the head assembly which looks like two heads initially although I do wonder because we have two each side um, if we've actually got four heads if you actually look at them they do seem to be the actual head chips themselves do seem to be wider than standard so that leads me to believe that um, it's not lying, it says DA4, that uh, this is possibly a four-head machine. In fact, it says it's a four-head long play machine. So it may be that um, rather than for additional trick features, these two heads, two additional heads, are for the long play facility, which means it's probably got very good quality long play. Now, we do have a large void of space here. Um, that may be on higher end versions of this deck probably filled with extra boards but for this particular version it doesn't have any additional features. If we come around to the back have a quick look at the rear of the machine we have Paratel or SCART so that's handy. Uh, standard RF also got um, an audio dub port so I'm actually wondering if this is capable of receiving an audio input and doing a bit of audio dubbing to basically uh, dub over existing audio that's the serial number I don't know I can't work out what the um, build date is from that so I'm sure you probably can if you google it uh, there's another small socket here, which looks like it's for a camera pause. Um, what else do we have? We've got auto and colour switches. We have an edit switch as well, which you don't normally see on lower end decks. So it looks like this is a reasonable sort of deck, to be honest with you. Um, I think best thing to certainly do at this stage is to get a plug on it and see what happens. So I'm going to go and find a plug and we'll get a plug on it, plug it in, see if it powers up. So I've popped a plug onto it. I've plugged it in, it beeped at me and we're now in standby. So let's press operate. Oh, okay. So it's come out of standby. Um, let's check. Yep, there's nothing in there tape wise. I have a cassette, so let's pop a cassette in and see what it does. Oh, so it doesn't seem to accept a cassette, so let's turn it on again. Can I give it a take the cassette? So it doesn't seem to want to accept the cassette. 
so to speak. Let's try that again. Operate. See if I can manually coerce it into accepting its fate as regards a cassette. So, you would open that. Cassette would hit here. That would go forward like so. That would drop down because you've, when you put the cassette in, it drops this down. That would come forward. And that should trigger. I think there is probably somewhere in here a switch that this would trigger and that would basically set the deck into motion. So I think first thing I want to do is try and find where that particular switch is. So let's have a quick look. I actually took the bottom off because I wanted to see if there was any um, access to the top of the deck from here. Obviously we've got the bottom of the deck and we have the capstan motor here and this belt which is beginning to do that horrible thing that rubber belts of this sort of era do and I'm hoping I've caught it before it's actually done that horrible gooey thing so if I rotate it round like that I'm hoping I can just gently prise it off like so and do the same on what I believe to be the spool mechanism here so gently there you go. But you can see that that is beginning to do, just beginning to liquefy, pretty much. Yeah, in fact, look at that. Ugh. Now, I don't have a suitably sized belt, I don't think, but I'm going to see if I can make something, um, make something up which will drive it for the moment. Uh, it's a pretty standard size belt. Uh, it is a square belt. It's approximately, I don't know, probably about four or five millimetres thick. And it's not particularly big, not particularly long. So finding something that will fit should not be too much of a concern. Let's try and get something on there for now. So I'm wondering if that could be why it's not working, because it looks like this does do a lot of the driving of the entire mechanism. So certainly this cog arrangement here seems to be quite a fair amount of uh, action going on there. And it's this belt here that seems to be the single drive point for the whole, um, whole of the deck. don't know if it's for the same for the inject... Uh, sorry, the tape mechanism inject, uh, eject and uh, tape travel itself or take transport but hey let's see what's going on let's see if we can get something sorted I've managed to find something I've used two much smaller belts of this sort of size which are about sort of two two millimeters thick paired them together and made this sort of arrangement here which if I turn this does rotate that large capstan motor incidentally there's the head motor Nice looking sort of thing at the bottom there, nice venti type affair. Uh, a couple of cogs here which are obviously for the tape transport, uh, for lacing the tape. Got uh, probably a mode switch arrangement under here somewhere. Anyway, enough waffling, let's, um, let's see if that makes any difference to this unit being able to accept a tape. In fact, we're going to do that next episode because I like to tease you. If you found this uh, episode interesting, don't forget to hit that like button. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.